said, please don't abort your baby, have it, we'll take care of it. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a good idea, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but that's what... That's, that's the only what... thing that, that's the only offer that uh, that has sort of any validity from, uh, you know, the pro-life folks is, sure. is that, you know, it's not just a, a sh- it shouldn't be just a shaming thing, you should be making an offer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're if you're telling people how to act, you might want to offer some kind of alternative uh, at the very least. But anyway, uh, going on with the story during the original sanctuary movement, and this was back in the 80s again, uh, American congregations were responding to the hundreds of thousands of Salvadorians, Guatemalans and Nicaraguans who sought refuge from violent turmoil in civil wars because the Reagan administration did not acknowledge that the governments of El Salvador and Guatemala were violating human rights. It classified their citizens as economic migrants, granting few cases of asylum. More than 150 congregations were part of that movement, which began at the same church in Tucson that sheltered Nioy Ruiz. Several activists were convicted of violating laws. Decades later, activists cite similar frustrations over government inaction. Although the bipartisan Gang of Eight Gang of Eight immigration bill was passed in May of last year, it has yet to be discussed by the House. The bill will have created. What's- What's the Gang of Eight? I'm actually not sure on that, but it's going to explain it a little bit. Okay. Uh, The bill would have created a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants, tightened border security, and streamlined the immigration process. It also would have banned raids on schools, hospitals, and houses of worship, except in extreme circumstances. President Obama says he will use uh, executive authority to take action on immigration issues, but will delay doing so until after midterm elections in November. Because, you know, this people's lives are in the lines, but we got to wait until after the elections. It's really funny. Um, I mean, it's well, funny, funny. Yuck, yuck. Uh, I mean, when when if you believe something's right. You shouldn't be waiting until after the election to do it. Yeah. If something is politically inexpedient to do and, uh, you know, you believe it's right, like a, a person, a statesman, a person of a uh, of, of character would go ahead and do it anyway. Absolutely. Even Thomas Jefferson once said, don't let the rule of law keep you from doing a good thing. Let's uh, we've actually got calls on. Let's go to Rusty calling in from Houston. Rusty, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, y'all. Uh I, I'm just calling in. I got a few extra dollars saved up, and I'm wondering if I should invest that in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or invest in silver or gold, just because silver keeps the four-year low here, yeah. and then Bitcoin also have been down recently. So, Yeah, you know, I got to say, silver is really cheap right well, now. Well, the first thing we should say, actually, is that we're not giving investment yeah. advice or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, I can These tell are our you, opinions. I can tell you what I do personally, Rusty, you know, if I have some extra cash. And that is, you know, I kind of like to diversify. It's true. You know, gold and silver are cheap. And um, Bitcoin's also at buying prices, I think. So, you know, it never really hurts to have a little bit of everything. But the question is, like, how do you split it up, right? <laughs> do you do a third in each? Right. Um, I mean, the great thing about Bitcoin is that you really don't have to buy like a whole Bitcoin where with silver and gold, it's like once you get down below an ounce of gold, it starts to get more expensive. So like a tenth of an ounce of gold is more expensive than one tenth of what you would pay for a one ounce gold coin, if that makes sense. So as you split it up smaller, they get relatively more expensive. Um, and with silver, you know, you don't have that problem as much because a silver round is, you know, a one ounce silver round is only like, you know, 20 bucks right now. But, um, with Bitcoin, there's really absolutely no cost to splitting it up. It's the same cost to buy, you know, uh, 40 millibits, which is 41 thousandths of a Bitcoin as it is to buy, uh, 400, you know, per millibit. So like per per unit or whatever, it's it's the same price. Yeah, I, I don't know how much, you said you have a little bit put aside, and I don't know how much we're talking about, but I do How like, much are we talking about? <laughs> it, it's a few grand, about four, four to six. Oh, cool. So, well, I mean, you could actually do, you could go one-third, one-third, one-third if you wanted to, buy an ounce of gold, a couple, 10 ounces of silver, you know. Do you think that gold and silver are going to react that much differently in the marketplace? This is what I'm kind of thinking. Do I or does Rusty? Well, I'm asking you. uh, I mean, because I think that, you know, gold goes up, silver is going to go up. I think silver's got more upside potential right now, to me, what I'm seeing um, than than gold. Well, it's possible. I mean, there's a lot of people who watch the ratio of gold to silver, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, over time. And it doesn't always stay completely the same. Not always, but Um, close. 
usually it stays close. Um, I'd go half and half, and I'd uh, I'd go silver and Bitcoin would be what I would do. You but know, I, I like to me, suggestions. gold and silver strike me as more longer term investment. Sure. Like, um, so there's a great book by Harry Brown, which this might be more information than you want, but I really want to promote this because it's just a wonderful book. It's called uh, the Permanent uh, Fail Safe Investing. And what he talks about is this thing called the permanent portfolio, which is meant to be a very conservative investment strategy, which, you know, historically, when you backdate it, it gains, you know, eight to 10 percent a year or something like that, which is not a huge gain, but it's enough to keep pace with inflation and to kind of keep you going. And he recommends basically splitting it up one third, one fourth cash, stocks, bonds and gold and then rebalancing when the prices fluctuate of those things. Now, Bitcoin is not in there. That might be a speculative investment, but that doesn't mean if you're willing to take a risk with your money uh, that it's not worth getting. No. Yeah, you can get your Bitcoins from ExpressCoin.com and you can get your gold from gold.freetalklive.com. Thanks so much for the call, Rusty. Wishing you prosperity. Yay. 855-450 free. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. 
You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Brian and Stephanie. 855-453-FREE. So we were talking in the uh, the last segment about this uh, situation where some churches are taking in illegal immigrants. Yes, yeah, they are taking an undocumented. Um, we did get through the the entire story, so I I think it's important really to discuss a lot of this though. That it, it's ironic because in the eighties, under I, I think it's fair to say that the bulk of the people, or at least the group that is being represented by the mainstream media as the ones that are against, uh, you know, immigration and against having these little kids come over here or the adults or whatever or people are taking their jobs and all this business uh would are republicans right and republicans fairly i think worship ronald reagan okay some yeah, do yeah, right? yeah i think by and large that that's fair and i'm, and I'm not saying an icon how's that yeah he's an icon and i'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing you know i i've had my my reagan moments uh <laughs> you know where i really appreciated him um but it's ironic because reagan actually said that this was okay like he understood that they were he actually called them economic migrants and that this happened in the 80s and nobody freaked out uh it's i find it very very strange that now you have these groups, these same groups that were somehow okay with it in the 80s now are just, you know, really, uh, you know, they're brandishing just about everything to say, no, these people can't come here. And if they're here, we need to send them back home. But Brian, everything changed on 9-11. Oh, that's it. Right. Well, I think that reasonably I th what I think is, is that, uh, you know, nobody wants a bunch of freeloaders. Um, you know, I'm sure. I'm not interested in anybody showing up at my house that uh, wants to eat the food, uh, use the electricity, um, you know, get Wi-Fi access and and do everything that they do without paying their dues, um, without paying. You know, I mean, if somebody wants to come and rent my house for three thousand dollars a month or something like that. Sure. Yeah, they can stay there and I'll move someplace else. Sure. <laughs> Because that's a good deal for me, um, but you know when they want if they want to pay three dollars a, a month, then I don't. Right? It's all about payment. And when it comes to people, most Americans, I think many Americans will be fine with the idea of people coming here and working uh, to make a better life for themselves and their families, um, away from the harm that, uh, frankly, U.S. foreign policy has brought upon their nations in many cases. Absolutely. Just like a lot of the economic uh, uh, refugees in the 80s. Sure. Now, people, according to this article, are clearly recognizing, though, to even get in here legally is just this insane process that you have to go through. And they were waiting for this bill that was supposed to streamline this process. To get people into this country, they want to be here for, quote unquote, the right reasons, whatever that happens to mean. And but, you know, they said that's enough. You know, we're not going to wait anymore for the politicians to do something about it. And they ended up going on, you know, doing it on their own. And I think the other interesting point here that is that's really fascinating is not just the Republicans are the ones that are like, look, kick these people out of the country. I think you hear it from a lot of Christians, and I do want uh, Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, well, a lot of Republicans are Christians. So. Yeah, right, right. And I just want to say kudos. As an atheist uh, myself, as someone who doesn't has no love lost for the Christian religion, kudos to these people for standing up and, and really 
practicing the religion for once, saying, no, we will love you and accept you and not turn you away. Yeah, it's pretty clear. The, the Bible's very clear about accepting strangers in your land and, and that sort sure. of thing. Sure. Well, I mean, just picture Jesus saying, well, you're a Mexican. Sorry, son, you're not coming into heaven. Right. Jesus who hung uh, out come with on. prostitutes and, uh, you know, those that were out, you know, they were outside the law. You know, you know, what you'll hear is you'll hear illegal coming out of the mouth of somebody who, uh, you know, is supposed to be a Christian. Consider for a second that Jesus came to stand against those that were you know that that uh, decided who would be the who would be the the, the chosen ones because right. of the law Jesus Jesus put down the Jesus of the Bible put down the Pharisees for their uh, uh, you know their intolerance intolerance their their being married to the law and all this stuff and you know this is a civil infraction it's not even a criminal infraction what's the in, what is the punishment for for being here illegally it's a civil infraction yeah absolutely i you know i don't get it in fact i mean honestly for christians to be against uh, immigration, or to even be for borders, really blows my mind. Especially, you take something like uh, Galatians chapter three. I think it's verse twenty-six, where Paul is saying, you know, look, if you believe in Christ, you are, you know, you are the the, the seed of Abraham. You know, they don't the, Christians shouldn't even see borders. They shouldn't even see genetics. All they should see is belief. And at least these Christians here in this coalition and the Christians in the 80s that were part of this whole sanctuary movement, they are living up to those words that they're supposed to venerate so much. And they are, like you said, you know, they are practicing the things that Jesus talked about. I think it's pretty clear. Jesus was all about, and I'm not a fan of the guy, but Jesus was all about you know, just leveling all of these crazy notions that existed at the time, particularly religious ones, but also some some state ones. Yeah, would they would Jesus have been all excited about Roman citizenship? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, uh, right. Paul didn't even seem that excited about it, although he was a Roman citizen. Yeah, he used it. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, what, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> these, <Right. laughs> these people in the church are using their um, their citizenship to give uh, sanctuary to to other people. Yeah. And I think it'd be very weird to try to house people in your church. I mean, you know, you're trying to do sort of a business there and have some folks camping out in the some sanctuary. Some of them have little houses, like where maybe the uh, what's it called the the priest lives. Oh, yeah, that's a parsonage. Parsonage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but the priest is living there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hey, you could make it happen. You've got the baptismal area there. People can take a bath. I mean, come on. it's yep. This isn't that hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, what I wonder about Ronald Reagan is, like, in the 80s, people couldn't get welfare. I mean, they, I know that he kind of cracked down on it famously, but, like, there was plenty of welfare in the 80s, right? What changed between then, then and now? Well, um, as far as welfare goes, illegal immigrants really can't get it. It's pretty rare for yeah, at least reasonably that's my rare understanding. But it seems to be this common misconception nowadays that people think illegal well, immigrants are coming here and just getting all this welfare. But um, if somebody comes here illegally and has children, then that child is eligible for all kinds of benefits that um, somebody else couldn't. Mm -hmm. Now, for one, if you're illegal in this country and you get hurt. They have to take you at an emergency room. They can't just turn you away. Right. So that becomes the um, de facto doctor's office unless there's facilities in that uh, you know town to take care of them. Everything for mothers and infants, WIC, um, you know, a variety of things that takes care of uh, young ones. All that's available. And I'm of the opinion that uh, you know I don't think that. People here should have to pay for folks that that come here to uh, to get a bunch of uh, free stuff. But then again, I don't think that you should necessarily have to pay for somebody else who doesn't want to work either. Um, whether they were born in America or whether they're right. American or Mexican or whatever. Right? I don't think it really matters. And I can tell you that churches will step up to take care of these folks as evidenced by this article. And good for them. I, I, I applaud them. What okay. do you think? Yep. 855-450-3733. It's got to be our most uh, uh, controversial stand. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. 
This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key Liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the Costume Party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. That's what uh, free spells out when you use those letters on the phone. That's 855-450-FREE. Live Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. 855-450-3733. Stephanie, you and I and Brian are going to be off in Orlando you made that sound like you and I are going there on a date together. Uh, that wasn't exactly how I meant it. <laughs> and we're taking Brian along, like kind of in the suitcase, maybe. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I hope you guys have fun. But <laughs> <laughs> no, just to get that clear, we yeah, we're all going to be there. Mark is happily married. I'm heading off with Ian. <laughs> is your wife coming? Or just, no. Okay, no. just going with Ian. Yeah. Well, you're going on a mandate. Somebody's got to stay behind and take care of the pigs. Exactly. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, but regardless, we will all be there. It's next weekend, so if you're thinking about it, if you are in the area, it's going to be in um, Orlando, 
at Florida. the Walt Disney World Resort, uh, the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't actually have to go to Disney to go to this event. It's called Coins in the Kingdom. At Wait, I thought fun was mandatory. Fun is mandatory. <laughs> but it's not you mandatory can... to go to Disney World Indeed, if you don't want to. Indeed, it is not. <laughs> they are going to have a Disney trip on the Monday after the weekend. There. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I unfortunately am going to miss that, but I will be there at the beginning of the weekend, and I'm really excited about it because... This is um, it's a true community oriented Bitcoin conference. You know, in the in this day and age, there's so many different Bitcoin conferences and now they're becoming more specialized. This is definitely a fun one. This is going to be a party, a way to hang out with people who you really like, but may not get a chance to spend too much time with otherwise Lots in the of Bitcoin community. Lots yeah. of opportunities networking. to learn stuff. I, I mm-hmm. did actually hear uh, from the head of Sean's Outpost, who's who's throwing this party, that uh, or the celebration, I should say, that there is going to be some huge news coming out of this. Oh, really? Well, yeah. well I'm glad we'll be there. Uh, to, it's going to be to huge it. somethings at the conference. Yeah. <laughs> Tickets are 60 bucks. Hotel rooms, $99. Kids under 12 are free. Coinsinthekingdom.com. Going on with this article uh, that you've you've got there, Brian, uh, where churches, I guess, are giving sanctuary in their sanctuaries. <laughs> yeah, in 12 cities in the U.S. Uh, that they have decided to. Now, yeah, I mean, this we've to been talking. illegal talk- immigrants. Yes. Yeah, and this is good just for those who are just tuning in in case you missed it. Churches are, you know, giving sanctuary to immigrants. But um, I wonder about other groups, other like marginalized groups like why aren't churches giving giving sanctuary to like homeless gay teenagers whose parents have kicked them out? Why aren't churches giving sanctuary to war tax protesters who um, are hiding from the government? Um, you know, I mean, and of course, it's a great well, start, and I hate to criticize them for what they're not doing. But Quakers, the Quaker Church has uh, definitely given support to people who are doing um, war tax resistance, mm-hmm. um, and so I think that to some extent you, you've seen that happen. Um, the homeless gay teenager thing, I think you could probably get sanctuary if you were willing to give up prostitution and, uh, you know, um, drug use and drinking and a variety of things that people who hit the streets might be participating in. I doubt a lot of them want to, like, keep, pro- like, a lot of times if they're doing survival prostitution, they're not doing it for fun. Probably you know? not. Uh, they're probably doing it for the money, but they're in, they're getting the money in order to do the drugs in a lot of cases. Well, if their parents, I mean, anyway, we've kind of gotten off topic, yeah, but. I, I, and we- all I'm saying is, is that I think that most churches, I would imagine that most churches would. I just, why, offer an what I was trying to say was, was, like, I'm curious why they've chose to focus on immigrants at that moment at the moment you know well it's uh it's in the news they're getting true uh, they're true. <laughs> they're getting some it seems like churches have this incredible power right like to be left alone by the government i mean if any other group if your club if you're like local i don't know um just free keen tried to shelter illegal immigrants there is no chance that free keen would be left alone by the government indeed it would not so why do churches get a pass uh, because churches are churches. They've been around longer than the government. So, you know. I think that's true. Well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's, it's just, just it's inconsistent. The, it's the space they occupy in people's heads, right? Yeah. Um, that's and all what it is. Th- well, that's I, I mean, is. yeah, I consider that most religious people consider God's law generally higher than the state. And so Let's the last. Hope so, for the God's last, sake. Yeah, the last thing you Unless want. Unless it comes to immigrants. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. The last There's thing exceptions. the state would want is to have, you know, a revolt on their hands by religious people because they say, no, God invalidates your law. Uh, which right. honestly, they'd rather turn the religions against each other, sure, like they have in the immigration issue, where you've got uh, religious people on both sides sort of battling it out. Oh, absolutely. That's the best thing for them is just to keep everybody fighting against everyone. Yeah, else. yeah, keep everybody separate uh, in any way or divided. I should say not separate, divided in any way you can. Uh, that's really a good way to keep in power. Let's go to Skype. You can actually Skype us. Uh, our username is lrn.fm. We've got Steve calling in. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Basically, why are the churches supporting illegal immigrants? It's because the churches, as an example, the Roman Catholic Church, receives something like $4 billion each and every year from the federal government. Why? For various programs, such as uh, food banks, okay. that type of thing. So they're, they're receiving a lot of money. Therefore, to continue to receive the money, I believe, that uh, they're supporting Obama's illegal push to get immigrants into the country. 
That's why they're doing it. But what about the the idea that the Bible talks about uh, supporting strangers in your land, and uh, you know the idea that Jesus would certainly welcome illegals? I'm sure that's the case, but we have to look at the reality of being bankrupt. Yeah, well, it's a convenient cover story. <laughs> well, I think that we, I think that the nation's bankrupt. The, the nation's never actually had not been in debt, which is uh, you know an amusing um, you know uh, idea for that that uh, the the debtor is the slave to the, um, the 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 lender, and this is supposed to be the land of the free, but it has never been debt free. So that's kind of funny. Um, but I mean. You, we, an immigrant doesn't want your free, in many cases, doesn't want free stuff from the government. They just want an opportunity to work. I don't believe that uh, because most of the You don't think that any immigrants want to just want to work? Uh, no, I'm not saying any. Okay. I'm saying most of them that are coming from South and Central America have backgrounds in socialist governments that they want the government to take care of them. Most of them are— But they don't. The governments in those countries are, are even worse off than the United States. Understood. That's why they're coming to the United States, because they, they want the government to take care of them. So if, why, we stopped, so if we stopped welfare, then you think that it would just stop people from coming? It would curtail it. I, I definitely I think it would that. curtail it. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, so I think it would lessen it, no doubt. I yeah. think that there's a percentage of the population in every country that are the entrepreneurs, the people that want to, to make a better life for themselves. Exactly. They'll do what it takes. And if we can make a if we can make a program for those people to come here, we'll have the strongest okay. nation on the planet. But we do have that. Right now, if they enforce the current government regulations that are there for bringing in people— like you could bring in a doctor or an engineer, scientists. Uh, Silicon Valley has a terrible time bringing yeah, in. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, it's immigrants. easier said than done. I mean, the, the, this, as a, the, as the a former you're, scientist, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. But right now, we bring in one million legal immigrants each year. Every year, one million legal immigrants. We have them on the books, and then we have like I think a six hundred thousand people come in to work on the farms and stuff like that. For they get the special agricultural. Uh, visas. Increase that if we need people to, to help. But push for, you know, educators, uh, scientists, you get the uh, medical people, bring those people in, not the people who don't, can't even read Spanish. So I, don't care. Stephen, I don't care if they can read or not. Lots of smart people, lots of people who make great businesses can't read. I, I've, well, I don't know about that. I would think that maybe a 5% of those people, but I think 95% are coming just for the welfare. And the food stamps. So, Stephen, why does Obama, uh, going back to something you said before, why does Obama want people to come into the U.S. illegally? Because he wants to make sure that they all vote Democrat and they have a one party system. And he wants to undermine the values of America by overloading the system. We are not going to be able to handle all of the welfare payments, the food stamps, the EBT cards here in uh, Massachusetts. It's nuts. It I, is I nuts. I agree with I, you there. I don't disagree with your assessment on that, but I think the Republicans really miss an opportunity when they shoot down everybody who wants to create a path to citizenship. Um, you know, they, but they, they're not doing that. They're not stopping other people from coming in. One million people are coming in right now, legally. It, it needs to be higher. That's less than a, a third of a percent. Thanks for the call, then, Steve. Then make it two million. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Pairs to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in making strides against breast cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. 
A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending aol to aol there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. The live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. 855-453. Those are the Pro XPN call-in lines. They're toll-free for you. And there are bounties available right now at BitcoinBountyHunter.com. One of them's worth somewhere around... I don't know, sixteen thousand dollars or so. Last I checked. Wow. It it might be down a little bit because uh, they're they're all denominated in Bitcoin, and Bitcoin price has been uh, down over the last day or two. So yeah, bount- but that means if you get it now and you hang on to it, it might go up. Oh yeah, it could yeah. very well. Bounties for what? They are if you could use your investigative skills um, to collect this bounty, you can uh, place your own bounty or add new ones there. The authorities aren't going to be solving these cases. In many cases, they're sort of finding people who were you know bad actors who stole some money or are trying to extort people with sure. uh, Bitcoin. That's one of the things that's been happening with Bitcoin. And this is this essentially, you know, Bitcoin security guards on the internet. Yeah, it's and like it's, the Bitcoin A team. I yeah, love it. It's great. It's awesome. Um, it, it'll All this work's going to be done by people like you, people that profit from their work and skill. Go check it out. BitcoinBountyHunter.com. That's BitcoinBountyHunter.com. Let's go to Tom calling in from New Hampshire. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I was just thinking, it's about ISIS. And, you know, uh, Senate candidate Scott Brown, formerly the U.S. Senator a U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, who's running here in New Hampshire, for people who are confused about this, but Scott Brown has this plan. He wants to 
revoke the United States citizenship of any U.S. citizens who fight alongside ISIS. <clears throat> and that, that's his big campaign theme. And the problem is that this U.S. Supreme Court has already said you cannot take away people's citizenship as punishment for anything or, or any other way than they explicitly wanted to lose their citizenship. Much okay. to the dismay, now, see, now the, the problem has come up uh, for a lot of Canadians uh, who've been Canadians for many years. They were born in the United States. They became citizens of Canada. They took the oath to the Queen. And U.S. statutes used to say, if you do that, then you lose your U.S. citizenship. And now along comes the Supreme Court and says, oh, no, uh, it's only if that's what they wanted when they did that. Uh, and now the question is, are these people U.S. citizens, and why haven't they been paying taxes and filing uh, bank account reports to Washington, D.C. after all these years after statute said that they weren't citizens anymore? And there's a lot of gray areas because they've had children in Canada who are U.S. citizens if the mother was still a U.S. citizen. And uh, the, this issue of people, of course, are re stampeding to renounce their U.S to renounce United States citizenship that they're still infected with under U.S. laws. Infected yeah, with. But, you know, well, this is the really the, the weird thing about citizenship. Yeah, you know, I think this is actually, I, I say, Scott Brown, go for it Be, and, and well, let it get passed. And the reason why is because then pretty much anybody here that wants to be an expat and avoid taxes, just say you joined ISIS <laughs> and then you don't have to pay those taxes. What, what if the state of Vatican City were to pass a law saying anybody who's got, you know, a baptismal record in any Catholic church, we've got, you know, your name, your, the date you were baptized, your parents' names, where they're from, we know who you are, and you have to pay a tithe to the Catholic church now, if, no matter where in the world you are. The, if, if a country can tax its citizens, decide who its citizens are outside its borders and tell them they have to pay taxes— and report their bank accounts and everything. I've already mentioned on your program that Kenya could claim President Obama because he was born in Hawaii to a Kenyan father, a citizen born overseas to a Kenyan father. They could impose such restrictions on him. It's absurd, but uh, yes, the idea has been mockingly brought up by uh, some of the Canadians uh, that uh, post on the Isaac Brock Society website there. It's not really a society. It's just a website that uh, they're furious that they're being told they have to pay tax to the United States under the, the uh, Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. The, the right. Canadian banks are trying to find out who is infected with United States personhood right and, and this is the, yeah. the united states is way too big for its britches every other country in the world says if you make money while inside of our little uh shape on the map you've got to pay us uh you know you gotta pay us some money and that's sort of the accepted way of doing things however the united states says and if you look at its foreign policy, it really doesn't believe that it's uh, uh, that it, that it is that Washington D.C. doesn't believe that it, it is relegated to the shape on the map that is the United States. It believes it owns the globe, sure, and it acts that way because they say. Anywhere you are on the planet, if you make more than $90,000 a year, that's the threshold if you're outside the United States, um, $90,000, then you owe us a percentage of your income, which is fascinating that they think that they can do that. They also make it very difficult for people who are living outside the United States to get bank accounts. In many countries, uh, the banks simply won't do business because the compliance costs and dealing with all the paperwork with yeah, the federal government is too hard. Almost every country won't do com won't do business because yeah. that's why U.S. citizens are are giving up their citizenship. Yeah. It really it about, check this out. Check check this out. You get people applying for a job like let's say uh, working in the bookkeeping office at a factory. Oh no, you would have to sign the paychecks and having signature authority over a Canadian bank account, you would be required under US law to report the balance of the bank account and how much money is in there and everything else. When you're a Canadian citizen, maybe you were born in the USA, uh, a border baby, they brought you across they, they brought mom across the border to have the baby and then went right back into New Brunswick. There's a lot of those and these people are being turned away from job opportunities and the the issue is coming up what about the accounts that lawyers have to keep for their clients if the lawyer is a Canadian citizen but is also under U.S. law considered to be a United States citizen. Yeah, this so, is, you know, <clears throat> but the, this is the, what the uh, government does. It, it just creates, it makes it very, very difficult for people. Headaches. <clears throat> it's Thanks all so much one for the call, planet. Tom. Yeah.
It's really, you know, citizenship, it really shows the joke that citizenship is because you can't, citizenship is meaningless if what you're a citizen of has no teeth. But if what you're a citizen of has teeth and is willing to use it against you, that becomes the joke. That becomes, you know, irrelevant. The only way you're going to see competition in the area of governance, because that's what we want. We've got 200 or so countries on the planet. The way they're going to get better is through competition, innovation, serving customers. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want competition. Yeah. I want the ability to opt in and out. Well, that's what you, that's the only way you can do it, though. If you can say, "Look, I want to fluidly move across uh, geographic borders. I want to go. I want to be able to live at the place that's going to offer me the best to citizenship deal, and that's what I'm looking for." And you know, these countries are saying, "No, you're locked in. You've got a contract. Uh, it's the social contract. When you were born, we stamped our we stamped our country's logo on your butt." Yeah, you know, you're right. But that's the thing is that if you had competition of governance, they would say the same thing. Uh, like I, I'm worried that they would just be the same way. They just well, be a we smaller. We do have competition, and because they make it difficult to move from one country to another, that's why you have the lack of innovation. It's the the U.S. Well, State competition Department. matters more if you are able to move fluidly around the globe. Because right, right that's what we're both saying, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah but I think the corruption can happen in so many ways, and I think that if that if there is. You know, if you can't choose, if you can't walk away from a citizenship without debt, um, I'm concerned. Right. You, 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 we forgot to mention the exit tax. We forgot the there's filing fees to get rid yeah. of your um, citizenship. Look, um, the fact is slavery throughout humankind has had a cost to, you know, buy yourself out of slavery. Yeah. You have to be able to walk away from these things at no cost. And I'm concerned because, you know what, there's we, we talked about Bitcoin. In fact, at that coins in the kingdom, there's going to be a Bitcoin marriage. There's going to be a, it's called BitNation. Yep. OK, there's going to be a marriage there. And I am concerned because people seem to be very excited about this bit nation. Ooh, about, let's put our government on the because, blockchain. Yeah, because here's governance that you can choose. But here's my question is, can you walk away from that at no cost? Because if you can't, then they're just more tyrants. Well, Brian, they provide divorce services, too. <laughs> well, 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 that's the thing. You know, in fact, they talked about that. They yeah. said with this bit nation that, oh, you could join savings accounts. Look, you're missing the whole concern here. The idea yeah. is that I think you're getting stuff held over in your head that you have to follow that you never you never agreed to. Right. Like it wouldn't be very free if you if someone said to you, OK, right, there's all these different religions in the world and they're competing for your allegiance, but you have to pick one. You can't be an atheist. I want the ability to be an atheist in addition to whatever religion I might choose. That's real freedom. That's having the most options. And same thing with states. And you have to be able to change your mind, too. Like, you could tomorrow, as unlikely as this sounds, you could decide tomorrow that you're going to be a Hasidic Jew. I'm right? pretty sure that's not going to happen. I'm pretty sure it isn't, too. Like, I would put really good money that that's yeah. not going to happen. But um, you could decide that. And that's that's what a person needs to be able to choose for themselves. Yeah, yeah but if they you need to be able to choose to completely opt out. Yeah, if you can't yeah. walk away from it, it's a tyranny. And, and I think people would say, well, but there's got to be some cost. Well, again, you're a tyranny. 855-450-3733. What do you think about this archaic notion of citizenship? Did it just come from kings owning serfs? 855-450-3733. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, September 28, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $392. Antiwar.com reports, though Turkey was loudly touted by the Obama administration as a key ally adding to their coalition against the Islamic State, so far Turkey has not agreed to take any military role in the war and indeed had previously ruled such a role out over concern about hostages. With the hostages freed, Turkish officials are now opening up to the possibility of some military role, with President Tayyip Erdogan saying the country could take a role in the future fighting against the Islamic State. The comments were decidedly non-committal, though Erdogan did say he was open to deploying ground troops into Syria for the creation of a future buffer zone along the border. Turkey has been keen to see a buffer zone created inside Syria as a way of getting rid of some 1.3 million refugees they've taken in since the war began. Since much of the Turkish-Syrian border is now held by the Islamic State, it's not an ideal place to carve out a temporary refugee camp. Turkey had proposed the buffer zone years ago when the Syrian civil war began, but the fact that they're once again floating the idea suggests they may be nearing some commitment to the conflict, despite the huge risk of blowback and fighting a war along their southern border. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports, the president of Spain's Catalonia region signed a decree on Saturday calling an independence referendum on November 9th, putting him on a collision course with the central government, which says such a vote would be illegal. The wealthy northeastern region, which accounts for around one-fifth of Spain's economy, has its own language and distinct culture, and has long fought for self-rule. A large majority of Catalans want to hold a referendum on independence, according to polls. The region's president, Artur Mas, signed the decree in a solemn ceremony in the Catalan government offices in Barcelona, surrounded by his government and political allies in his campaign for independence. Mas said in a speech, immediately after the signing ceremony, Catalonia wants to speak, wants to be heard, wants to vote. Now is the right time and we have the right legal framework to do so. Madrid has vowed to block the referendum. On Friday, the Spanish deputy prime minister said the cabinet would meet on Monday to formalize the appeal against the vote. The objection would then be handed to the constitutional court, suspending the vote until a final ruling on its legality, which could take years. Spain's central government says a Catalan independence referendum would violate the country's 1978 constitution drawn up on Spain's transition to democracy. Mas is under pressure from separatist coalition partners to go ahead with the referendum, even if it is declared illegal, although he has himself said that he would not do anything that is against the law. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The AP reports a volcano in central Japan erupted in spectacular fashion on Saturday, catching mountain climbers by surprise and stranding at least 40 injured people in areas that rescue workers have been unable to reach. Another seven are missing. The injured, who were unable to descend the 10,000-foot Mount Antaki on their own, are staying in mountain lodges. 32 people had serious injuries, including at least seven who lost consciousness. Police, fire, and military rescue workers were planning to try to reach the area on foot after daybreak on Sunday after deciding that the ash in the air made it too dangerous to use a helicopter. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sources at the video streaming service Netflix reported today that they had sent local man Shane Fowler a personal message earlier just checking to see if everything was okay after the 31-year-old watched an entire season of the FX program Sons of Anarchy in a single viewing session. Well, we happened to notice that Shane had been sitting in front of his laptop and had burned through all 13 episodes of the first season of Sons of Anarchy. So we thought maybe we could send him a note and just sort of make sure he was doing all right. Or if he needed someone to talk to or something. Netflix says the message, which Fowler received minutes after he finished viewing the season one finale of the motorcycle gang drama, was just a way for the company to see if there was anything they could do for their longtime subscriber. I mean, we do this stuff all the time. Just last year, Mike Ralston from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, watched all four seasons of The Tudors after his wife left him. We were there for him. We just like to check in on our customers from time to time. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Brian. And Stephanie. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. And I know you, you may not be used to live programming on Sunday, but I but trust me, we're here taking your calls at 855-450-FREE or on Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. You can call us there, and uh, it's even usually better sound quality. Uh, all you have to do is send us a user request. We'll take care of that inside of you know, a few minutes, and then you can just give us a call on Skype if you've got a good... Uh, audio setup. Let's go to Jimmy calling in uh, from Florida. Jimmy, you're on Free Talk Live. How, how am I sounding? You sound just fine. Good, good. And I'm not on Skype. Um, I know. I'm trying to figure out how, how to say what I want to say in a comprehensive manner. But basically what it boils down to is a bunch of men read a book that's 100 years old and decided that they're going to apply that book to other people by way of pointing guns at them. That's all the citizenship BS is. Yeah. I think that's pretty succinct Basically. and right on. <laughs> it's interesting because um, the conversation about citizenship really wasn't a big one um, early on in the United States. It didn't become uh, really a big deal till the late 1800s with the yellow man laws and the chi- the Chinese are taking our jobs. Um, and that There's kind of always thing. a boogeyman. It changes every 20 years or so. Right? Well, if there isn't a boogeyman, you can't have a state. Yeah, but if you boil it down to the basic principles... A bunch of men wrote the, what do you say, the, the yellow man laws or whatever it was? The yeah, I believe that's laws. what they're called, yep. Okay, so they wrote words on paper and said, okay, now we're going to take it with our guns and apply it to everybody else. It's, all it is is a gang of pirates pointing guns at innocent people. And the innocent people, I, I, it seems yeah. to me, their only choice is to, to point guns back because— well, yeah. the, I disagree with you there, oh, yeah. Jimmy. I mean, it's it's actually like you can't do anything about it, but it is very powerful to realize it and stop giving the system your moral support, right? Because most people are at the stage where they 
they still believe that it's legitimate and great to be a citizen. And they're even proud of it, which in some cases they didn't choose to be a citizen. They were just born somewhere. And to be proud of something that you have no control of, such as where you're born, I mean, what is that, right? There, <laughs> there's no pride there. It's basically just kind of nationalism. Oh, I love it. It's it's just like sports where, oh, look, I loved Joe Montana when he was in San Francisco. But then when he went to play for the Kansas City Chiefs, oh, I hate that guy. It's like, wait yeah, a why? minute. <laughs> it's so arbitrary. But I mean, I think there are things you can do besides start pointing guns back at the government. And the first and most easy, well, maybe it's not easy, but the first step that probably needs to happen is just not giving the idea um, your moral support, just stopping believing in it, right? Right. And, and I get where you're coming from, Jimmy. The non-aggression principle, that's uh, the idea that like, what libertarians uh, consider the sort of foundation of morality, which is that, um, you know, you don't aggress against other people, but if somebody uses violence against you, you should be allowed to pr- defend yourself. And that's all you're claiming, but... I think that the monopoly on violence that is the state is so powerful and so um, righteous in people's minds that, you know, there's no there's no winning in, um, you know, applying the non-aggression principle to them. And if enough people stop giving it that credibility in their minds, though, at some point in time, the legitimacy is just going to fall away and you don't need a violent revolution. It's just kind of people move past that idea naturally that we need citizenship or we need governments. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'd take the scenario of slavery. There's 50 slaves on a plantation, and 10 guys with whips and chains and guns. If those 50 guys would have went aggressive, but then again, there's another gang of a thousand guys that read a hundred-year-old book that's going to chase them down. Mm-hmm. It's not that you can just not lend them support because they're going to follow you everywhere you go. There's got to be a point. But slavery ended in, I mean, not in the U.S., but in a lot of other places in the world, um, actually everywhere else in the world, the institution of slavery ended without bloody revolution. It just, yeah, in Europe, the idea it just, just fell away. Yeah, it became distasteful. And, and it's hard to say that if you're a slave who's in that system right now, you're obviously feeling terrible. You don't want to be in that system. But given the choice between staying alive, because if, you know, if you, if you confront the state or you point out or you confront the abusers, they're probably going to hurt you pretty badly. So making the choice to just kind of stay alive and do what it takes to protect yourself until the point where this institution just naturally falls away because people evolve beyond it, that's what I would prefer, the strategy I would prefer. I wish it would fall away, but the the formal institution of slavery may have disappeared, yet those people still must pay their taxes and must pay their dues or GovCo is going to come and get them. It's and true. They're, they're still slaves. It's just not so ugly and terrible looking. It's Jimmy, not have Saddam Hussein who would chop your hand off in the street? Yeah, they do it behind closed doors. Jimmy, have you, you heard of the Free State Irish? Project? Excuse me. Have you heard of the Free State Project? Yes, and uh, uh, if uh, dog on it. I like Florida so much more than the cold of New Hampshire. And <laughs> I'm from was, Sarasota. Adam, I'm from Sarasota originally, and uh, I moved up here about eight years ago for the Free State Project. And I can say that uh, you know my lifestyle is superior. I like living here more than I liked living in Florida. Um, I was born and raised in Florida, but really, what the Free State Project is is it's an opportunity for people to, uh, you know. Who, who believe in the ideas of liberty to be around other people who do, bounce ideas off and enact, uh, you know, change. There are people who are using the legislative uh, system, people are using the judicial system, people are using uh, media, people are doing civil disobedience, people are doing all kinds of agorism, people are doing all kinds of different stuff in order to find more freedom in their life. And what I, the, th- the biggest thing I got out of it is, is the hope that, uh, you know, I was just desperate when I was in Florida. I was angry and desperate. The uh, the the Kilo decision came down. I don't know if you're familiar, but essentially this uh, decision said that uh, the Constitution, where it says it's that uh, property can be taken for public use, oh no no no, we can take it for public good, which means that if we want to tax, you know, want to sell it to somebody else, that's fine. So the the ruling was essentially they can steal your property and sell it to somebody else that they like better, and that's cool. And for me, that was such a demoralizing um, blow that I signed up for the Free State Project. I think I was a signer before that, but I was really ready to go um, when I saw something like that happen because I wanted to be able to do something, anything to, uh, you know, see more freedom in my lifetime. Uh, Yeah, you know, Jimmy, just just real quick, and 
we get this a lot, you know, where people are like, look, we got to raise up guns. And then when we recommend, like, look, if we come together in Free State Project, you can go through, you know, whatever processes to get real freedom in their lifetime. And it's like, it's like, well, but it's too cold. You know, and it's like if you're at the point where you're ready ready to to take up up arms against the government, the grave grave is cold, too. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I understand. I understand, Jimmy, your frustration. I agree with you that this stuff is all just words on paper. I'm totally with you. Uh, But boy, that always kind of gets me. Well, uh, I moved from Detroit, so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. We'd love to uh, see you up here in New Hampshire. Yeah, come at least visit come, sometime come take want. a look at the Liberty Forum or the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You can find out more at freestateproject.org. Jimmy, I do thank you for the call. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And I just want to mention real quick that you can get archives of the show for free if you uh, made a call and you want to listen to that call, see, you know, how, how do I sound on the radio? You can do that. You go to archives.freetalklive.com for anything more than a week old. I think everything's actually at archives.freetalklive.com. Yep. But you can get the last seven days right on the front page of Freetalk. Or you can uh, follow Free Talk Live on SoundCloud if you use SoundCloud. Yeah. And I know we load all the stuff. We use SoundCloud. That's that's what we use. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I think Jimmy had some great points to bring up. Um, you know, obviously, I don't agree with you know going to violence over this, but uh, but it's funny because so many people are like, look, we got to get back to the Constitution, and they totally and a lot of those people will agree. I'm not saying that's what Jimmy was saying, but and and a lot of people will totally agree. You can't put debt onto the a future generation, you know, and it's like if you can't put debt on them, how can you put laws onto a future generation? Like, I mean, that's that because that's the that's the the thinking, the line of thinking that these people have is that you can't put debt on it because it's not their fault. Well, also, I would venture the laws, you know, these pieces of paper are not their fault or their decision either. Well, uh, it really blows my mind. You would have a an extreme change in government, extreme change in the government of this this country if debt couldn't be carried from one generation that's a to fact. another. I mean, the, consider for a second that a parent that uses their child's credit uh, score it, because they've ruined theirs, that person will be incarcerated for theft. But a nation that uh, mortgages its grandchildren's future? <laughs> yeah. Normal. Yeah. 855 <laughs> Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, <laughs> software, electronics, <laughs> photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. I'm sure I can speak for many of thousands. I don't fear illegals. I don't want them here and their filth that they bring with and the disease that they bring with. All the people who work in the stores and the markets and the restaurants are overwhelmingly Hispanic. And they seem very clean and be doing a fine job here. And I've never heard anything about problems with disease. For you to defend 
the illegal immigrants, and I'm not sure, as I said earlier, which host at what time is very condescending. Um, Madam, I will defend anybody that is peaceful and looking for a better life for themselves. We well, already pointed I out. I, I don't defend them. I, I wish that people like you. You would say have that to Mexicans are filthy, and you call me condescending, lady. You say no, they're I, disease ridden and filthy, and they, I'm condescending. And they are, and they are. And You're I outrageous. Do live You're out of here. Thank you for the she's, call. She's had all her rope. She's hung herself. Free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck, or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. You can give us a call and talk about whatever's on your mind. Or you can use Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Live Sunday edition, it's Mark with you. And Brian. And Stephanie. 855-450-FREE. And if you are looking for focus or you're feeling fatigued, looking to get the extra edge, I want you to check out modup.net. They offer the highest quality modafinil. Uh, and to prove that point, they are supporters of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. They put their money where their mouth is. Okay, so if you're looking into modafinil, and I recommend look into it for yourself. Look into you know local uh, local regulations, etc. cetera. Uh, but believe me, they want to serve you if you are interested in modafinil. Uh, and you can go to, again, that's M-O-D-U-P dot net. That's modup dot net. They are supporters of the Bitcoin community. Uh, and so because if you use Bitcoin, you'll get a 33 percent discount. And if you use the code FTL, as in Free Talk Live, you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So this is something businessmen, students have been using this all around the world. Keep in mind, Free Talk Live, hey, we're a worldwide radio show. Okay, and modup.net is a worldwide a business and they offer world class service. So check it out for yourself. Modup.net. Use that code FTL. 855 450 free. That's the Pro XPN's toll free call in lines. And Stephanie, you've got a little uh, newspaper clipping that's been floating around the internet. Yeah, in fact, Free Talk Live, I think, posted it on their Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com if you want to. Like, give it a like. Yep. But this is just a really short, pithy um, little op-ed that somebody wrote into a newspaper that talks about the Middle East, and it's great. I just wanted to share it. So here we go. It's called Clear as Mud, and it's by Aubrey Bailey, who lives in Fleet Hance. I guess that's in England. Okay. Um, oh, Zero Hedge was actually sharing this. Yeah, it, it really made the rounds among sort of like libertarian social media this past week. But it's, yeah, it's I, great. You can see why. So oh, here's yeah. what it says. Clear as mud. Are you confused by what's going on in the Middle East? Let me explain. We support the Iraqi government in the fight against the Islamic State. We don't like IS, but IS is supported by Saudi Arabia, whom we do like. We don't like President Assad in Syria. We support the fight against him, but not IS, who is also fighting against him. We don't. And, and a big right. portion of who's fighting right. against him. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm already cross eyed. Mm. Right. <laughs> well, there's more to it. 
Yeah, keep going. We, we don't like Iran, but Iran supports the Iraqi government against IS. So some of our friends support our enemies, and some of our enemies are our friends, and some of our enemies are fighting against our other enemies whom we want to lose, but we don't want our enemies who are fighting our enemies to win. If the people we want to defeat are defeated, they might be replaced by people we like even less. And all this was started by us invading a country to drive out terrorists who weren't actually there until we went in to drive them out. Do you understand now? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> the one thing that I would take umbrage with on this is the idea that this all started with uh, the invasion of, I'm thinking they're talking about Iraq, uh, but perhaps they could be talking about Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, Or maybe they mean Iraq like 1992 Iraq. <laughs> I, I guess. Um, well, no, 1992. You mean or 19? Yeah. So uh, at that point, it wasn't to drive out terrorists, though. No, right. It was to uh, uh, defend uh, Kuwait. Wait. So um, you know what? You, the problem you have is is that it goes back much farther than this. If they're yes. calling, if they're writing in from England, England's been involved in the Middle East. Uh, was involved. Lawrence of Arabia uh, was a World War One uh, warrior. Yeah, I think that's far closer to the origin the origin of a lot of this. And essentially they wanted to create this order that they understood in the Middle East. They'd draw the lines up, they'd say this you know, these spots, that spots. Uh, but you know, these people have never had an opportunity to sort of rule themselves. It's yeah. always been one di- dictator after another. It's really important to point out, I mean, because this is we're talking about the fall of the Ottoman Empire, which happened in like nineteen twenty. Okay, yep. and that was a direct result of World War One. Some would almost argue that might even have been the real point for World War One was to end the Ottoman Empire. I think there may be some evidence to that. But the point is, is that within the Ottoman Empire, yes, it's an empire. Okay, but you lose things in translation to some degree, I think, because, you know, Islam and, and the Ottomans, you know, the Ottoman Empire had no notion of nationalism. This didn't exist. Uh, you know, like even the idea of patriotism and all of that was really this was it was a Western uh, kind of uh, injection into the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century. Um, and so now you bring on this new idea and you bring on a lot of this Western stuff and really look at what it created. I mean, it created the chaos that came out of the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Now, I'm not supporting the Ottoman Empire by any stretch. Okay, but yeah, I mean, getting directly involved in their business really brought a lot of this on. But if somebody's got a rickety house... And you go kick a wall in, then you're responsible for the whole wall. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, they had a crappy yeah. house from the beginning. And sure. sure, their kids shouldn't have been running around with exposed nails and exposed electrical lines. But then you went and kicked a hole in their wall and to you know told them it's a door or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's really where the problem is: is injecting uh, you know yourself into the situation. Yeah. If the Ottoman Empire falls. It's the responsibility of the people inside of those geopolitical boundaries to figure out what their uh, governance and their lives are going to be like without the intervention of people from outside. Right. And that's and what that, England did. Yeah, that's what it, that has to happen organically. Uh, that really does. And I can tell you this personally, as a veteran in Iraq, I think sooner or later Saddam would have been kicked out. OK, but that needed to really happen organically. Uh, for that to occur, for people to really understand what they wanted. You have so many different ideas and forces that are just going at each other right now that that's part of the reason that when ISIS comes in with such a strong voice and hand, you know, Baghdadi there, or Baghdadi there, uh, it really, like, people just, you know, they get they get attracted to it because they have no foundation of what they really want, I think. I mean, that's the only way I can make any sense uh, any sense of it outside of conspiracy theories as to what happened. And so, yeah, really, when you, I think that's a great analogy that you made. And they, they it would have happened. We, I mean, the, the Ottoman Empire was already falling apart in the 19th century. They were trying to do so many different reforms, and it wasn't working. And it should have had the opportunity to organically become what it needed to be. Instead, I think Britain or whoever, maybe other League of Nations member or whatever all that business was, uh, was very interested in some real estate. Well, yeah. I mean, oil was uh, becoming very popular, um, but very important at that moment in time. And certainly, there was some in the Middle East. Uh, I, you know, I'd have to look and see when they've discovered oil in the Middle East. But it certainly seems to be the reason that it's an important place sure. now. And what I would say, as far as U.S. foreign policy goes, is uh, the idea that you're going to fund and arm a group of people that's going to fight against the person you don't like. 
And then a few years later, or maybe a few months in this case, those people are going to, uh, you know, be on your not so favorite list. And you're then going to be fighting the people that you armed and funded and, uh, you know, did all that other stuff with. That system is not working. Yeah. Uh, Like, it's really not working working and it needs something else has to happen here my humble suggestion mind your own damn business and stay out of the middle east yeah and before somebody says that well but god wants that land please if your god is a real estate agent your god sucks well god if god wants the land there should be nothing you should be able to do about it right he's going to get the land (laughs) and he shouldn't need you to die if, if he can you know do burning bushes and and stop the sun in the sky he doesn't need us 855-450-3733, Free Talk Live. What do you think? Who who can we blow up in the Middle East to finally win? 855-450-3733. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800 518 7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800 518 7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. 
as in Creative Commons. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in about whatever is on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's a toll-free call, and you're going to have to add a 1 in front of it in case you don't know. Toll-free lines are sponsored by ProXPN, and they, well, it's a virtual private network. What's that, Brian? Uh, VPN, yeah, virtual private network. What that is, is it's software that connects you to or that encrypts everything you're doing and sends it to a server other than the one that it normally straight goes to. It'll, it'll bypass that server like the ISP and then it'll go to that one and it'll all be encrypted on the way to that other server and then it will allow you to access the internet from there. Now, this allows for a lot of very useful things. One of them being is encrypting your information, what you do online, uh, and keeping your ISP who can take requests from the NSA, your employer, take your pick, and get access to all your info. And you don't want people to have that. You can browse relatively anonymously on the internet. Now, yeah. if you log into your Facebook account uh, through your VPN, they're going to know who it is. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but this will work otherwise. And this is also a handy thing because, look, when you're going to the airport, you don't know who you're connecting to sometimes. I mean, airports are getting a little bit better about it by putting up signs, you know, saying this is our the name of our Wi-Fi because this is so commonplace. But, look, not everybody's doing that, and especially if you're going around the world. And ProXPN is a world worldwide VPN service. You can access it from anywhere. And that's the other thing that it gets to do. If you are traveling the world and say you can't access Facebook because it's blocked in some countries, a VPN will get you past that by and large. Uh, and again, ProXPN is doing a great service. They are improving it all the time. Uh, and that's that's one of the beauties of really getting a pay for VPN. And if you are going to pay for this, and I recommend it, you can try it out for free first. But believe me, you want to support a service that's that's giving you all of this encryption, all of this privacy ability, and all of this access ability. Uh, and you can use the code FTL50. You'll get 50% off uh, the price of an annual account for the lifetime of the account, not just for a year, for the lifetime of the account. Or you can use Bitcoin, use the code FTLBTC, and you'll get 62% off uh, the lifetime of the account for that one. Believe me, if you want digital privacy, I say it all the time, this is step one. One and they are the best in the business. Okay, so go to proxpn.com, use those codes FTL50 or FTLBTC, and get that privacy you deserve. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. You can give us a call at 855 450 free or on Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Carl in Atlantic City. Carl, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? On my mind is we in Atlantic City, we've had four casinos close in the last year. Fifth one's going to close in November. Sorry to hear that. And my question, I know, I don't know how many jobs lost, 7,500 I've heard, 9,000. Uh, it's a whole lot. So my question is this. We're a sanctionary state in New Jersey. I'll throw that out. Okay. So who should have the jobs that are left? Should it be the people that have lived here all their lives and worked in these places? and say, hey, we need to e verify the people that here aren't legally or even would pass two visas, should they lose their jobs? Uh, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you think? Well, let me ask you. Um, somebody comes to your house, wants to mow your lawn. Two people come to your house, want to mow your lawn. One's a uh, yeah. uh, you know an, an American citizen. He wants to mow yeah. your lawn for seventy five dollars a month. Plus, you're going to have to cover the insurance costs and uh, make sure that he has a lemonade. workman's compensation. Yeah, yep. and you're, and he's going to have to have a lemonade uh, every time he comes. <laughs> um, and I would well, really. Right. What's that? You're asking, you're asking the wrong guy. I cut my own lawn. Uh, right, but, but across the street, but, yeah. But yeah, you know, I mean, you, you, yeah. I'm sure when you've been out there cutting your lawn, you've thought, Man, I would pay somebody to do this at least some amount of money. The other one is uh, an illegal alien comes and says, I will mow your lawn for $50. And so, I mean, already he's significantly less costly than the American, and he's not demanding a lemonade. Well, you... I have a guy behind well, I, I would take neither of them because I have across the street the lady has a a black guy does it 
and he he works at the casino on weekends, and he has a long business during the week. And behind me, the guy works for Budweiser on the weekends. He has a lawn service, and he's also black. Okay, I would take. Either I thought you were going to say child work. labor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's uh, what I believe in. Well, well, if you can get a neighbor's kit to do it, sure. Yeah, but that's. But, I guess know, that'd be the only point yeah. that I have on that is is that essentially I yeah. I don't think that there's any you here in this country where there's not supposed to be any demarcations of royalty. I don't think that uh, right. I, th- I don't think it matters where you live. I'm a, I live in a new place. I've only lived in New Hampshire for about eight years, and there's some people okay. that that don't believe that I should be able to have any opinion, any political opinion at all. You're not from here. You you don't get to say. Um, they don't want me to have an opinion. Now, obviously, they can't stop me, but they do want me to shut up. Right. And that's what well, it's like. I'm a stranger in a strange land. Right. Well, I yeah, that's kind of the thing. Rent- Go yeah. ahead, Carl. I thought I heard you saying about renting a room, your house out, and whatever. But see, sometimes these houses that get rent out, say in Atlantic City, there's. Ten mattresses on the floor oh, to yeah. pay maybe he's made a rent. Well, you know where I'm going out with yeah. that. A lot of times and, you'll and, find and people and living in conditions yeah. you wouldn't want. You would not want for yourself. But they need to do that, and they can pay the rent. So you know you got to have a whole bunch of people live in the house to be able to pay the rent. That's part of it. I right? got you, Carl. I do appreciate the call. Okay. 855 450 free. Yeah, you know, like e verifying things like that. I know a lot of people support that, but those are really, they, they keep, and why people support it is largely because it keeps Mexicans from getting jobs here. But the problem is when you, when you implement, when you open Pandora's box with something like that. Okay, you, what stops them from saying, "Oh, you're a libertarian, no more." You know, you don't get to work here with like E-Verify. Yeah. We or need whatever. to make sure that you're patriotic. I yeah. mean, I could totally see that. Whatever arbitrary. I mean, I was going to an extreme, no doubt, but whatever arbitrary s- system they set up, they'll say, "Oh, it's you not can't an work extreme. here anymore." It's not like the Red Scare didn't happen in this country. Oh, sure, right. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I not mean, only that, but we have these terrorist watch lists, and there's supposedly there's procedures if you have some the same name as somebody who's on it, but. That affects a lot of innocent people, and it's nobody cares until they're the one that it affects, but when it does, it's a big deal. And I don't support illegals getting jobs over legals or something like that. I have a problem with uh, laws that prevent people who want to work and want to make a better life for themselves and their family from doing that. Now, I got every problem in the world with a, you know, a bunch of giveaways that are going to draw in what I call stray cats. You put out you put out cat food every morning on your porch and then you rage and get upset that cats come come and eat out of the bowl. You're you're not just stupid, you're crazy. You know what I mean? I don't know what to say about that. Now, if your wife keeps putting uh, cat food out on the uh, or your husband, your spouse keeps putting cat food out on the porch and then you're upset, your problem isn't with the cats. It's with your spouse. The crazy person keeps putting food out. So, that's the problem with all these freebie things now we have seen i've read a bunch of the stuff what we found is is that it's a net plus to this country even illegals no matter what are a net plus yes i don't think you should have to pay for their stuff but they still bring more than they take because remember what's this do you have a specific jobs and do you have a specific source on that i don't have a specific source on the financials i read about that i think it was the economist um okay but i do know the american conservative was very clear that illegals don't commit more crimes from a demographic point of view okay so well, there's, a, there's young a point, people sure. tend to young people tend to move so if you say you know um white americans versus illegal immigrants then illegal immigrants commit more crime because illegal immigrants tend to be young males but if you compare the demographic cells, the young males that move, uh, the, the young male illegals versus young male, young white males, then you have an exact match. So they're yeah, just Yeah, I want to know about the Canadian illegal immigrants who are largely white and European heritage, you know, French Canadians or whatever. Do they commit crime? I helped a Belgian uh, get a job illegally uh, when I was in Florida. <laughs> really? you know, he needed to work while he was here. He was visiting the states for a few sure, months, and yeah. uh, you know, a friend needed needed a laborer, so yeah. I paid him under the table. You know, 
Dunkin' Donuts was one of the companies that famously supported E-Verify. I'd love to see a market solution to this so that people who believe the economic fallacy that immigrants are bad could buy their coffee from places that only hire American workers and pay more for their coffee, and people who don't could go to... Uh, places that do hire so-called illegals. 855-450-3733. What are your thoughts? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvaluein.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. Bellawood Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning, solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Is your money manager giving you safety and security? Wouldn't you like to make your money work harder for you? Then you should consider joining PhilzGang.com, where thousands of individual investors have successfully profited. This year I'm up 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. Well, I just want to let you know how great, what a great teacher you are. For over a decade, PhilzGang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell have been teaching, coaching, and investing right along with all Phil's Gang members. I want to thank Donnie for Mark Rapp. I bought 2,500 shares of AUI and sold it this morning. At $820 profit. Why not join thousands of satisfied Phil's Gang customers today? Go to Phil'sGang.com, Phil'sGang.com, or call 877-600-4264. That's 877-600-4264. Call today. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, the word free. It's uh, the Live Sunday edition with Mark. And Brian. And illegal Stephanie. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. 450 Your citizenship isn't illegal, but I'm sure you break <laughs> no. the law somehow. Everybody, <laughs> everybody listening, does. <laughs> everybody listening to me is break, breaking the laws, and probably more serious ones than... Uh, well, if you're in a car, you're illegally. likely breaking them right now, because we've read studies on the air that show that um, the speed limits are set at the 30th percentile of what speeds people naturally drive at. So that means 70% of people are going faster than the speed limit. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so. and, and I'm in New England. I'm pretty sure I'm breaking some kind of sexual deviancy every night. <laughs> that oh, hasn't been taken course. off the books. Well, that hasn't been be taken too. off the books. <laughs> There's a, there was a book written called uh, Three Felonies a Day. I haven't read it. It probably should put it on my list, um, but I, I have not. But it, it, you know, it just kind of the title itself speaks to the phenomenon that we're breaking laws all the time, and qu- quite frankly, ones more serious than the immigration laws on the books. But people take these immigration laws very seriously. Um, nonetheless, let's go to the phones here. Nathan from Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, hey, guys. What's going on? Uh, I think you're hiring the wrong immigrants, Mark. You sound like you were hiring the Russians there. I couldn't. I can't hear you. It's the wind's blowing or something. I said I thought it sounded like you were trying to hire Russians. That yeah, well, is, you know, uh, I'll do my best. Well, I came across an interesting conspiracy theory, and I hope Brian will like this. Oh, goody. It's a Harry Potter conspiracy theory. Oh, there's some doozies about well, this. Hold on just a second. Does it have to do with Harry po- the, the real world interacting with Harry Potter or inside the Harry Potter universe? Um, well, either way, because J.K. Rowling has given funds to a kind of um, organization that takes care of the old children, so you can interpret it either way. So you may have heard the theory already, so uh, stop me if you have. The, the idea is that the whole story from the beginning to going to Hogwarts to defeating the Dark Wizard is all an extended metaphor for uh, a mentally ill child being institutionalized. And you can see it in the beginning where, you know, he's kept under the stairs, you know, feed him enough, and he's raw, and or he's, uh, you know, a, a strong skinny little guy, and, you know, suddenly he gets whisked off to a magical wizarding school, which is a metaphor for an insane asylum where all kinds of crazy things happen, and, uh, you know, he befriends a girl named Luna. Luna is like the moon. The moon is a uh, symbol of insanity and Lucy. madness. Are you getting this and, from uh, Free Domain Radio? Because I remember a couple of years ago there was a podcast about this. I've heard it somewhere. Well, I read it on Crack.com, but yes, that, that uh, Stefan has also uh, advocated this theory. So mm-hmm. I don't know if he came up with it or not. And are you uh, a fan of Harry Potter? Like, do you read the series? Uh, well, I've read the series. I guess that makes me a fan. Um, okay. So I like it. I've, read I've it. actually never is, never read it. <laughs> I've read the books. Some well, of the books. it's a very fun series. It's a very fun series. It's, um, but the problem, I guess... The thing about this theory of the story as a metaphor for the trauma and mental illness of the character is that you can apply it to anything, but really I think it works especially well for Harry Potter because, you know, the, all, all these obvious allusions to mental illness, uh, you know, he, he hurts his brother and, uh, you know, the dark wizard uh, grows in strength as, uh, you know, his own personality uh, dies. And right. It, it does seem like you could read the whole story as a metaphor for a small child who gets uh, you know, gets into a violent outburst because of his traumatic uh, experiences, you know, the forced to live under the stairs, and is then sent to a magical school for special children where uh, all these are. Yeah, this does get applied to a lot of things. Uh, another a movie I actually enjoy, Sucker Punch, is supposedly a metaphor for a lot of this as well. Um, it, it goes across the board. I mean, and there's there's lots of music videos where this is seen. Uh, there's a ton of it, and, and with a lot of the similar one, a lot of the similar examples that Nathan brought up um, as well. But the outcast, uh, uh, the outcast orphan, is a relatively common trope. Uh, when you're talking about superheroes, it's hard to name one with parents. Right, but then yeah, this well, would fit into the, the overarching conspiracy theory, uh, be, which is that the media is trying to destroy the family structure and get children you know, to, to break away from their family and go to la-la land so that they can be arms of 
whatever occult or the state or however you want this conspiracy to go. Or it's just unlikely that an individual who's uh, healthy uh, mentally is like, I mean, look at Batman. Batman is one messed up mamma jamma. Yes. And the reason is, is that I'm wearing his, the shirt. His, his parents were killed in front of him. And, you know, if you don't have your parents killed in front of you, you're not likely to go on the spree of uh, crime fighting that is that spans eight decades or whatever it is that Batman's been doing. Sure. Um, so, you know, I mean, what what motivates yeah, what an individual? Mark's at, what Mark's getting at is another criticism that I thought of as a theory, which is that it, you could basically consider it as uh, in conflict with the hero's journey because, like you're saying, a typical hero's journey will start with his parents being killed by stormtroopers or whatnot. And so you could say, well, it's just uh, you know, it's Same a hero's people. journey, and you just have to do some of these, you just have to do some of these things to, uh, you know, get the hero out the door. And of course, he's going to go through traumatic things. So, and I, I kind of agree with that as far as it goes. But Harry Potter, you know, it's kind of like they say about 9/11. There's just there's just so much evidence that uh, it makes there's so much smoke. I think there's probably some fire there. Well, you know, sometimes. Okay, I maybe there's something to that. I really don't know because yeah, I don't I know can... enough about Harry Potter. But I mean, couldn't you say that if someone is really interested in the subject of um, peaceful parenting and childhood trauma, and is maybe thinking about their own childhood trauma, which is you know I have no problem with that, of course. Um, maybe they see it in everywhere they look. You know what I mean? Like if you're focused on childhood exactly. trauma, exactly. you might see childhood trauma wherever you look. Yeah, it, yeah because then it becomes the – it, go ahead, Nathan. I, I was going to say the video he made of this was actually analyzing a different movie, but offhandedly he remarked about Harry Potter, and there's actually a cracked article which uh, deconstructs Harry Potter extensively. And that's why I thought, well, in general, I probably don't think much of this theory. It's kind of like the it's all a dream approach to analyzing literature. Yeah. But in this case, I think it really, that actually is a dream. Well, but that's the thing. It's like this wouldn't be, then this wouldn't necessarily be a conspiracy. Would this be J.K. Rowling just like putting her traumatic, perhaps childhood, or her trauma onto the page? That's an unconscious act, not a conscious one, right? Oh, it could be conscious, and it wouldn't really matter. I mean, uh, this is speculate. This is sort of idle speculation because sure. it doesn't matter why this wildly successful uh, well, theory the series uh, the only know, reason the- why it matters well i think that's a theory is that harry potter is successful because on an unconscious level people are seeing their own childhood trauma reflected in the in the work that's the theory that i've heard uh, anyway. you see it's satanism <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's actually the more interesting conspiracy is that it's all satanic what well, i'm saying is like with, a, with any kind of art whether you're talking about a movie or a, a book or a tv show or whatever it doesn't really matter so much what it means or what the person intended it to mean. It's what does it mean to you? And like, how right. are you, how are is you going to use that? Or is it Satanism, right? Like it just depends on where it is you're coming from. Yeah. Like if you can, if you can look at Harry Potter through the lens of it being representative of child abuse or a mental institution, and you can get something helpful out of that for your life, then good for you. Maybe that's just a tool that helps you in some way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be about that. You could just look at it as an entertaining story. Yeah, a lot of this can go too far. I mean, I've heard theories that like Chewbacca in Star Wars is a, is representative of your mother's vagina. Oh dear and, God! And I'm just, I mean, I hear that and I just, come on, you know, really, let's get serious here for a minute. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I, that, that's a, it's a bit much for me. I think that at some point, or people can, people will use, uh, you know, popular movies and books and things like that for their to 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 you know to to point to their own stuff the the things that's important to them um even and, freud said sometimes a cigar is just, just a cigar, a cigar. <laughs> but I, when stefan was stefan molyneux that like the truth about ferguson or something like that i think he came out with that and somebody said have you heard stefan's truth about uh, ferguson missouri and i said um let me guess black people spank their kids and i hadn't heard it or anything like that but uh you know that's that's what it was um and uh, you know I mean, it's a, if you've got a drum, you beat the drum, right? <laughs> and then everything sounds like the drum beat. And that's, you know, that's that. Yeah, definitely plenty of conspiracy theories around Harry Potter and its and its popularity. I mean, and, and to some degree, I can understand because it does get weird when something becomes so freaking popular, like where people with books, especially because we're in the age where people generally don't read, in my opinion. And I think there might be statistics to back that up. But, you know, there's lies, damn lies and statistics. Right. But anyway, <laughs> if if you you know, with people waiting in line, you know, at midnight for a bookstore to open or something to get these books. Yeah, you kind of go, boy, what is the deal? 
with that? Why is it that good? This is just, uh, you know, sorcery and kids. What's the deal? And so, uh, yeah, it does make you wonder sometimes. Well, at the end of the day, it's about what it means to you and what you can get out of it. So view it through whatever lens you want, including just being an entertaining story. Thanks for the call, Nathan. 855-450-FREE. What's some series that you think there's an underlying conspiracy in? 855-450-3733 was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,212, silver opened at $17.52, and Bitcoin is trading around $399. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news today, two days before Attorney General Eric Holder announced his resignation, U.S. District Court Judge John D. Bates ruled that the Department of Justice must release details on documents related to Operation Fast and Furious. Judge Bates ruled that the Department of Justice must submit the materials sought by the watchdog group Judicial Watch no later than October 22nd. The judge called the government's request for more time unconvincing. The FBI director on Thursday criticized the decision by Apple and Google to encrypt smartphone data so it can be inaccessible to law enforcement even with a court order. James Comey told reporters at FBI headquarters that U.S. officials are in talks with the two companies, which he accused of marketing products that would let people put themselves beyond the law's reach. While law enforcement is obviously perturbed that they will no longer be able to legally or illegally intercept people's data, privacy advocates are heralding the moves by the cell phone giants as an important step in the right direction. Hundreds of speeding tickets written by four disgraced Houston Police Department officers were dismissed after their ticket falsification scheme was exposed. Randy Zamora, chief of the Criminal Law Division for the City of Houston Legal Department, said it was in the interest of justice and simply the right thing to do to dismiss the tickets. The I-team of KHOU in Houston first revealed that officers Rudolph Farias, John Garcia, Robert Manzanellis, and Gregory Rosa were listing each other as witnesses for speeding violations, despite the officers not being present. The gang of four were allegedly seeking to collect more overtime pay for court appearances. 
Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern Style Burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Penn White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support also comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook, Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. The controversial practice of spraying the skies to alter the weather has recently come under fire. Activists around the planet will spread awareness about the issue of geoengineering tomorrow, Saturday. Businesses like Weather Modification Incorporated claim to increase precipitation, mitigate hail, and disperse fog with plain and ground-based aerosol sprayers, a process known as cloud seeding. The Weather Modification Association claims the practice of cloud seeding began in 1940 and no negative health effects have been found. This weekend, individuals concerned about the health effects of the weather-altering chemicals being sprayed are attending screenings of documentaries, participating in educational marches, and hosting lectures across the globe. The Austin, Texas event takes place tomorrow at noon at the Texas State Capitol. Visit gmacag.com to find a march in your area. Well, this weekend is full of Central Texas Liberty action for both anarchists and politicos. Alliance of Austin Agorists will hold their ninth networking party this Friday evening from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Brave New Books. Don't miss the opportunity to speak with four of Austin's finest crypto geniuses. Michael Goldstein, Justice Randier, Daniel Krawitz, and Jonathan Runyon will each give a talk on what crypto anarchy and agorism means to them and why it matters. Be sure to enjoy the farmer's market, free beer, and live music. Then on Monday, Texans for Accountable Government will be hosting a city council candidate forum and meet and greet. Austinites will have a chance to get face time with candidates running in their district, as well as to get answers to the tough questions. The event will be held at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub on Research Boulevard from 6 to 9 p.m. More information at tagtexas.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by Brave New Books. Your source for One World Way, Tangy Tangerine, and Clearly Filtered Fluoride Filters. Located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Five Hour Energy CEO Manoj Bhargava claimed this week that the 13 deaths associated with his product were just collateral damage in his company's ongoing war against that 230 feeling. Quote, we honor the sacrifice of all those who have fallen. I wish we could live in a world where you could get a spike of energy and no crash and not die. But that's not the world we live in. Passionate supporters have flooded social media, demonstrating the terrifying costs of midday drowsiness and fatigue, with consumers saying that when it comes to extra alertness in the mid-afternoon, they are willing to pay any price. As the wife of a five-hour energy drinker, we've had to sacrifice a lot in the name of long-lasting bursts of energy that carry you out of the workday and into the evening. We knew the risks going in. Argava says his company has no plans to stop until the 2.30 feeling is completely wiped off the map, at which point they will turn their attention to that 3.30 feeling, 4.30 feeling, and people with a case of the Mondays. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can give us a call, talk about whatever's on your mind. We've been all over the board this evening, 855-450-FREE. As a matter of fact, we've been talking about uh, geez, I, uh, ISIS, uh, the intervention in the Middle East, uh, illegal immigration. What was the first thing, Brian? The, the very, church that yes. sheltered the illegal immigrants and Harry Potter. And Harry Potter, that's right, <laughs> the last one. You can give us a call, talk about whatever's on your mind, the, these topics, and more, 855-450-3733. Let's go to, right to the phones, Christopher in Iowa. Christopher, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to go back and revisit the uh, the uh, illegal immigrant topic that you guys are talking about. It's a hot topic. Ago. And, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence as to working and all that. Yeah, the part that I can't get over is the rule of law violation. Now you guys—that's my favorite part. On that a little, 
with that. That's my favorite part because it's so easy to deal with. Well, you know, you talk about uh, you kind of brush it off as, well, everybody breaks laws. But that's really not is that while that is the case, the expectation of punishment is there if you get caught. Sure. With the illegal immigration, currently right now that expectation of punishment isn't current, isn't present because of what the president's done. Well, okay. Well, also, what's what's the meaning of the phrase "rule of law"? Rule of law means that the laws that are written down are enforced to the letter. On everybody, equally, right? On everybody, equally, correct. Right. So, I mean, what happens when a cop um, goes faster than the speed limit? What happens when a cop even hurts somebody? What kind of punishment do they get versus what you and I might get for the same crime? That is not for us to decide. That is for the law to decide. I mean, who... Where do you draw the Okay, line? well, if what the law is supposed to be just dis- Well, but if the law is supposed to be applied it. equally to everybody, there there's a clear instance of it not being applied equally. Not arguing that point. My point is where do you draw the line? Well, what laws do the you lines, say are okay the lines are drawn laws? by people far, far that believe that they're your superiors. The the laws have never applied in 9,000 years of the state to the to the state and its enforcers. Charlie Rangel doesn't pay his taxes. He gets censured by the house. You don't pay your taxes, your butt goes to prison and your family starves, right? Absolutely. What you're but claiming is right? what what you what you with a rule of law as it is it as it is implemented in any place but heaven means that the serfs do what they're told or they get their heads chopped off. We, the leaders, do what the hell we want and we're soft on our men. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's what the rule of but, law is. But, the rule of law is a fantasy to suck in Republicans. I don't agree with that point. I think if okay. you don't have that belief in the rule of law and that it is applied equally, then... Here comes the big gun, Christopher. Here it comes. Are you ready? Let's hear it. It's 1864. A black man is running across your pasture. Do you contact the local authorities and say that there's an escaped slave on the loose? The law compels you to. The law compels me to. The decision is, I guess that would be my decision whether or not to inform on that. I don't know. The no, no, the law, the law compels where, you. Where do I live at? Where do I live? I live you live in a border state. You live border. in a state where you have to, by law, report on an escape Every slave. Single do you one break of them. the it law matter. or not? You do not live in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess in this instance, I probably would. You didn't form? I haven't decided yet. You, okay. you put me in, this, in one of those conundrums. Okay. Right, right, that's the conundrum. And this is really what it comes down to. You know that there's good laws and you know that there's bad laws. That means that the rule of law is a system for getting good people to enforce bad laws, therefore making it a bad concept. That's all I put. Where do the laws come from? The laws come from evil liars. Where do you live? (laughs) Yeah, but the laws come from the people we elect to put those laws Who's we? Yeah, have most of those ever, people I didn't vote for. Have you ever for. filed the deciding vote in an election? Hey, you get the, the government you freaking put in. No, the I do not. I rarely get any of the people I vote for <laughs> go in. <laughs> I mean, you must live in an amazing you world where you get the government you deserve. I get a gun- government full of liars and thieves. I'm not arguing that point. There you I go. Know. The rule of law sucks because the people in the government that write them suck. If you can find me a government of angels, I'll obey your rule of law. I still, I still think you're you're sidestepping the point that what? You know, that we're what? You, you're just gonna pick and choose what laws you. Yes, choose. I am gonna use my moral compass to decide what is right and what is wrong. I'm, I don't call that a sidestep. I have put the barrel of the gun right on, right in the between your eyes, and you said yes. Laws are many. There are evil laws. Therefore, the rule of law is evil. This is not a sidestep. This is the root of the issue. Politicians are evil people. You said you wouldn't wouldn't argue that. Politicians write laws, therefore their missives must be at times evil. 
Thanks for the call, Chris. Very cleverly put. Thank you so much. I used to be that rule of law guy. Yeah. I was, because I thought, how can you run a society if you don't have a set of rules to do it? And the answer is, well, okay, let's have a set of rules. Here's the rules. They're easy. If you harm somebody, you must make them whole. If you do it on purpose, there should be a punitive element to that. That's really all it comes down to. Do no harm, keep your word, and it's fine. If you do do harm, you need to make good. If you do harm on purpose, perhaps you perhaps you need a scolding, perhaps you know, I, some kind I of more thing. With the punitive element I know you don't thing. Like the punitive element part. Yeah, it, and the on purpose thing. I mean, if you run over someone by accident, you know, I like restitution for the victim instead of punishment for the ag- aggressor or the criminal. I don't know. I, I think a lot of this is that everybody's trying to create this one size fits all system for everybody. And you know what? I don't I don't think that's possible. Um, yeah. I, I really well, don't. Well, it's funny because the, with, the caller, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, but Chris, I, I Chris, I Chris. OK, I appreciated his honesty. And yeah. He yeah was, kudos like, to when him. he was considering whether yeah. or not he would actually inform because I could see that he was thinking about it. Right. And right, so I appreciate it. I appreciate that vulnerability and that honesty. And that he even had the conversation. It was fantastic. True. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we like here on Free Talk Live. But, you know, about the rule of law, like there are lots of people who are concerned, just like Christopher was, that the rule of law doesn't apply to people who come to the U.S. illegally and, you know, maybe get a path to citizenship or whatever. Yeah. Right? It really or just stinks get the idea that stay. somebody can come here illegally and jump the line for a bunch of other people who are waiting in line, right? Like that's that doesn't feel very good. Right. Especially if you're one of those people paying the immigration lawyer and waiting in line. Sure. Sure. It doesn't you may feel never good. even get the lottery to come here from Mexico. Exactly. But I mean, before we worry about extending the rule of law to those people, isn't it kind of important to extend the rule of law to the politicians? And that's clearly not happening. (laughs) It's never going to happen. As long as you have people in power. When was the last time people in power turned their, 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 you know, violence against themselves? Never. They don't do that. No, they don't. That's the point of the system. They reward their friends and punish their enemies. They call it a rule of law so that you'll support their power. The rule of law yeah, and they put is this, a lie. They put this moral um, obligation onto it. You know, they, they give you this guilt trip of, well, you're supposed to follow all the laws and you're supposed yeah. to, yeah. ignorance of the law is no excuse, which by the way, that was, that the original origin of that phrase was that there were so few laws that you couldn't be ignorant of like the fact that it was wrong to hurt someone, for instance. But yeah, they put this moral guilt trip on everybody and say, oh, you're supposed to follow all the laws when... It's an impossible rigged system. You can't possibly know all the laws. A lot of them are victimless crimes. A lot of them are just put in place to kind of control you. And so that everything is criminalized in a sense, and they can get you for whatever you want. Yeah, I love the saying where there's a problem, there's something that's too big. And I think that is absolutely true. The amount of laws in the books are completely out of hand. The scope of, I mean, keep in mind, you know, I think the case could be made that in the United States, in America, it was not supposed to be like the United States. It was supposed to be more, you know, states were almost like their own countries yeah. and had far more direct control. The federation to handle the military. Exactly. Uh, and the, everything started going wrong, really, once that constitution got put in place. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crisis. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. You can give us a call and talk about whatever's on your mind here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. 855-450-FREE. Or LRN.FM, which is our Skype nom de plume. You know, we're talking about uh, immigration into this country, but... Immigration, in many cases, is just the importation of labor. Well, what about the importation of other stuff? Um, Americans love drinking coffee. There's very little of it grown on U.S. soil. Uh, Hawaii is the How only, could you possibly? Yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii is the only place where you can grow it. You ain't growing, you're not growing coffee in New Hampshire. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. This is getting rid of American coffee. <laughs> right, exactly right. We're displacing these poor Hawaiians. So there you go. You're taking advantage of foreign labor right there. Why not let them work in the United States? Um, we've teamed up with BuzzBox, and in order to... Bring great coffee to you. It's a shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% great Arabica beans. But we can work with Kiva to give micro loans to people around the world. Some of the profits from the purchases here uh, go to give micro loans to people in foreign countries that do not enjoy life. Uh, you know, a life that's uh, as good as the one that we've been provided. And when you get your coffee, you probably drink coffee daily anyway. Get it from through coffee.freetalklive.com. You're giving other people a hand up, not a handout. These are loans. They repay the loans, and then the money can be used to give to somebody else. It's coffee.freetalklive.com, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I actually just went through the process. It's quite easy. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones. We've got uh, John in Indiana. Uh, John, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? 
Uh, hello, Mark, Brian, Stephanie. I had a, a what if, and then I had a, a common question. The, the what if is on the border. If if we were spending before we got more actively engaged in the bombing campaign, if we were spending two hundred twenty eight million dollars a month with limited bombing, if if we took that money and absolutely secured our borders and had better control over the visas, whether it's student or work or whatnot, and secured our country, and then let the people in the Middle East, the Sunnis and the Shias, fight their own wars. But the money that we're spending over there, if we took the same money to secure our borders, you know, where where would we be then, and how much better off would we be? Can you do option C? Ago. Yeah, can I keep uh, my money? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I just want well, stinking I, I, government bureaucrats that have never done anything inefficiently in their lives, at least not working for the government they haven't. They probably do lots of efficient things. But, you know, government bureaucrats who are not known for their efficiency, I think that's a better, nicer way of saying it. Um, you know, sure. why, why should I be giving them money? Yeah, I would debate, uh, too, that actually if we weren't spending it on bombing people abroad, um, that border protection may not be so much of an issue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just as it was not an issue for this country for quite some time. You know, I think the intellectual discussion is if we don't control it over there, then it's going to come over here. And so I was just thinking if you didn't spend $228 million limited, probably ratchet on up to a billion dollars a month with bombing, if you use that to absolutely secure the borders, then instead of tearing up someone else's country yeah. and putting our military guys at risk. Do you like the direction this country is going, John? Do you like the direction the country's headed? Uh no, actually, I don't. Do you well, think it's moving from freedom to tyranny? I, I do, and, and I'm not— Do you want to give a tyrannical government? Ending. Do you want to be trapped inside of a wall built by a tyrannical government? No, not by a tyrannical sure. government. Me if, either. If gonna, <laughs> thank you so gonna, much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, that G55, clears things up. Yeah. 53. <laughs> I don't want their wall. I don't look. You know, your kids may be looking to go to China for uh, work in the future. Do you really want to be trapped inside the wall? Yeah, he's really. He was bringing up. I think, uh, I think whether he, he realized he it or not. He didn't want to make another point, and I dropped him. But you know, he, next yeah. time. Uh, we're, yeah. we're seven days a week from 7p to 10p even if we're on not on your local station so sorry about that john i was not thinking i gotta keep the calls moving though yeah i think i think he's brought up a problem uh or this is an old greek problem of what happens when the irresistible force meets the immovable object it gets rephrased today in a good defense is a good offense or a good offense is a good defense but the answer to the problem is always the same you don't have to play you know, that that's that's the deal. Like, mm. you know, because that's what he was saying. It's like, should we have a better defense instead of being an offense or should we have an offense instead of a defense? I would argue just don't play. You know, don't play the game. Let's go to Ed. Ed, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? I can sum it up in a few words. How y'all doing? Hey, hey Ed. Ed. Long time no talk. <laughs> hey, uh, three great forces rule the world. Stupidity, fear, and greed. Yeah, uh, th those. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> That's it, and there is no cons no conspiracy. It's just money and power always has been. And rule of law, you know, simply means that you just don't let. You try not to let individuals. It's it's the constant struggle. You try rule of law. You know, justice is supposed to be blind. It's supposed. It's to supposed be to be. But it's a, like right. a, it's a faith-based belief, and I've tried to get rid of those because the government loves faith-based beliefs. What, what's the terminology, Ed? You you know what it is? Um, how uh, rich people view or how the government views uh, religion? The poor uh, view, you know, see religion as true. Uh, the government oh, see it as useful. Regarded by the uh, common man is true, the wise is false, and the rulers is useful. Right. Yeah. And the rule of law is an extremely useful idea to rulers. And, you know, to the common guy, yep, yep, rule of law, good thing. Uh, you know, I, I just can't sit here and but, I can't but believe the main, it. Hey, Mark, but the main thing is an act of injustice is condemned not because a law is broken, but because a person has been hurt. That solves a lot of... Listen, justice really solves 90% of all our problems. Yep. 
You're right. If, if we you had... think about and look, and here's another quote written two or three thousand years ago: "We can have justice when those who have not been injured by injustice are as outraged by it as those who have been." Indeed, Ed. Thank you so much for the call. Uh, Eight, whoops, sorry. Eight fifty-five, four fifty free. I'm quick on that drop button tonight. Always love getting a call from Ed, though. <laughs> Let's go to Clayton in Arkansas. Clayton, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, first of all, I just wanted to say like how refreshing it is. I'm a first time caller, and how re- refreshing it is to like actually hear some people debating about things like the rule of law, a fairly abstract concept. I think it's so cool to like hear that on the radio. You don't hear that on the but... radio in any other show, do you? <laughs> No, I mean, that's awesome. Freetalklive.com. Like talk yeah. Follow us, get our archives. And, uh, you can hear us every day if you want. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, it, what I'm calling about, you know, I, w- one of the narratives that's not being told about the whole immigration crisis is that is how much immigration policy has changed over the course of this country's history. I mean, I, my grandfather, or great-grandfather, came over from Mexico I think for about $2, he crossed the border in, you know, the early part of the 20th century. Clayton, I, I do want and, I want you to get a chance to, to, to say a bit more here on this, because uh, I, I think that this is absolutely true. Immigration policy has changed dramatically. Yeah. A few generations ago, you landed on Ellis Island. They screwed your name up. They, they held you for three days, made sure you didn't have herpes or whatever, and sent you on your way. And that was it. Yeah. Then the quota system came. 855 450. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to infidelbodyarmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to infidel body armor. You should too. Spelled I N F I D E L. Infidel Body Armor. Just just won't quit. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. 
Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. You can give us a call. Talk about what, what you want. It's been immigration for a good portion of the evening, though. And, you know, on Free Talk Live, we take a radical departure from sort of the mainstream opinion on uh, free people crossing the borders of free countries. It's Mark with you. And Brian. And free Stephanie. (laughs) (laughs) You can be as free as you can make yourself. (laughs) And you can make yourself more free by getting some bitcoins. Um, I think that they're going to be a big step in the future to giving people freedom around their own money. Oh man, buying time right now. I'm looking at the price and it's 377 or 378. We are not investors. This is not investment advice. But, uh, you know, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies I think are a good idea. I have some for myself. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, you can get them all at expresscoin.com. Yes, Canada, you're welcome to uh, purchase from expresscoin.com too. I've been buying everything lately. Have you? Gold, silver, Bitcoin. The prices everything. are right. <laughs> so, you But can, I mean, if you've got a long-term strategy, you know, like you just buy a little bit every week and it's really easy to do that with ExpressCoin. You can buy 40 bucks worth of Bitcoin every week, pay no trading fees on use it. Use coupon code FTL and you can do it. Is Just make a deposit at a local credit union that has shared branching. You'll have your Bitcoins or Dogecoin or Litecoin or Blackcoin or Darkcoin or whatever cryptocurrency uh, you want that they have uh, within a business day. It's expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. We were hearing from Clayton uh, specifically about how uh, immigration laws have changed. And Clayton, I wanted you to get a chance to finish up what you were saying. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, as I was saying, my grandfather crossed the border, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century. And it was, you know, or my great-grandfather crossed the border at the beginning of the 20th century. And he crossed for just, you know, a few dollars and a name, a signature on a piece of paper. Yeah, I think the Constitution says $10, right? I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 10 bucks. You know, the thing is, I mean, it's just the rhetoric is crazy on this. Whenever I I hear, you know, sort of art, quote unquote, conservatives talking about this issue, you know, they'll say, how dare they come over here and make money and work? How dare they come over here and do things that are moving the American economy forward? You know, it's completely the wrong way to approach this issue. We need I to think be there's a lack people of... for working. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with that. I think like a lot of people don't think of... It's easy because we're taught this as we're growing up. It's easy to think of foreigners as like alien like that's even the terminology that's used aliens and illegals they don't ever say like human beings who want to work and human beings who are just like you except they happen to maybe speak a different language or look a little bit different i wish i had better terminology too because even the term immigrant i think is loaded um yeah. consider for a second that new mexico all immigrants or all of our ancestors are i mean well i'm an immigrant i moved from florida to new hampshire um new, new mexico's yeah. <laughs> constitution's written in both spanish and english so yeah, always has been it always has been it was written originally because it's called new mexico right <laughs> and uh, right. i mean so the suggestion that you you have to, oh my God, I'm America. I shouldn't have to push one or two or whatever to get English. Um, well, yeah, you should <laughs> because <laughs> this is an entirely an English speaking country. Um, but, you know, the idea that somebody south of uh, the border there is called an immigrant, but somebody north of it isn't. I mean, so if somebody from New Mexico moves to New Hampshire, 
They're just somebody who moved. If somebody from Chihuahua moves to New Hampshire, they're an immigrant. And I'm not sure I even like this terminology because it gives credence to Washington bureaucrats that really should have no business over this. Yeah, and really immigration— I mean, does, does go, a person's character really change when they cross the border? I mean, do they change in their fundamental ontological human characteristic when they cross all. the border? And the answer is no. You know? yeah, right. Exactly. The one thing that you could claim about uh, people crossing borders illegally is is that the border is the gateway drug to criminality. I don't believe it, but you might make the claim is is that look, I was able to cross the border and have a better life. Maybe I could commit some other crimes and have a better life, and that's a problem of the border, not of the person coming here and trying to work. So you know, exactly don't right. create the gate gateway mentality. Thanks so much for the call, Clayton. I do appreciate it. And, hey, I'm so glad he got to hear, um, you know, different ideas because yeah. the ideas in America seem to be so homogenous these days. Um, well, it's important, you know, considering American ideas, I think it's important to, if you just research the, you know, the the various immigration acts that America has passed, the immigration reform, if you will, throughout the past, you know, couple centuries or, through, you know, past 150 years or so. Uh, and if you look at the personal correspondence of a lot of the people that passed some of this immigration reform, not, maybe not counting Calvin Coolidge, uh, I think you're going to find some pretty serious racism, some real backwards thinking, some real antiquated Thinking. Well, you, you're going to find racism if you go and uh, poking around with politicians anywhere in the f uh, first part of the 20th century. Sure, but that's the thing. <laughs> Eugenics was a thing back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, talk about uh, like the last big one was what, 1924? That's the one that Calvin Coolidge signed. Uh, I mean, d things could have been changed then, but then, and you'd say, well, yeah, that's the 20s. Okay, fine. Let's go 20 years forward to uh, FDR. OK. To, and this guy, read his personal correspondence about Jews and the Japanese. I mean, this guy's about the about the Jews, <laughs> you know, and you're just you're going to read some of the most racist remarks you could possibly imagine. He was complaining about the Jews in Oregon. He was saying he, in his personal he said Oregon correspondence, was being overrun, by overrun the Jews. by the Jews. <laughs> You know, or and then, that, and we can see that history has borne him out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what what Jews in Oregon? <laughs> yeah, right. No idea. But, uh, yeah, or just look at like look at the correspondence about the Irish in this country uh, in the past. Oh, yeah. I mean, this it reads so ugly, and these laws are either responses to that or they are from that time. They have nothing to do with you today. Know what I hate Folks to were see? the 21st century. I hate to see those Irish people with their flags displaying their pride and their heritage and, you know, eating their Irish food and having their Irish oh, parades. It shows that they just haven't integrated. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it ludicrous? Oh. I mean, you think every Amer every white American's Irish, essentially. I mean, you know, <laughs> and they go out and they drink themselves some green beer on St. Right. Paddy's Day, which, of course, they don't do in Ireland. Yeah. And <laughs> somehow they're not integ they're, they're integrated as they could possibly be. You know, integration's kind of this funny thing, too. <laughs> well, let, let's get serious for a moment here, okay? Because, really, the Mexicans... They have diseases. They're just looking. Okay, they're they're freeloaders. They're not going for jobs. Wait a minute. Didn't the, didn't didn't not, uh, Hitler say that about the Jews? That's weird. I don't know, but probably. Um, but yeah, they, they just sure. they leached off the country's economy. Uh, so I guess maybe maybe we should start practicing eugenics if we don't want them here. I, I, I think that we could all uh, learn something from hardworking immigrants is what I think. I think Absolutely. That just be far better off <laughs> if we uh, if if we worked like we wanted to build a better life for ourselves rather than expecting the government to take care of uh, to take care of all your problems. Yep. Plenty of immigrants come here. They leech off the system. That's your fault for building, allowing a system that uh, would allow it. Like yeah. We had a guy call in who had a reasonably good idea, which is essentially take all the money from U.S. foreign intervention around the world, especially the Middle East, apply it to the border. Well, I say, you know, take, <laughs> take the inefficiencies of the border situation and let people keep their money so they can employ people who come across the border. Sure. We'd be all we'd be that much better off. Sure. And this has been mentioned on the show before, but I think it bears repeating. You know, you take uh, NAFTA, you know, it, the, this is uh, this was something that was put into action. What, in, in the 60s? Well, it's uh, I mean, it, it got implemented in the a large scale NAFTA in the 90s under Clinton. 
Okay, but well, there might have been pieces of it. That yeah, there's quite a bit, and that was part of that was okay. What workers can come in here legally to do good work? You know, this is even people from the Canada. wetback laws of '68. Uh, were what stopped essentially people just who who just came here half the year to work for um, you know picking okay fruit and stuff sure but these laws are decades old and guess what none of these laws have any response to the fact say someone wants to come over here and they want to do computer science or they want to help out Google or something like that they can't come here even if we wanted them to go through all those wonderful reforms that that the United States set up because these laws are so old. You have to reform this or just get rid of it entirely. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. One more segment. 855-450-3733. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Did my voice crack? It's puberty. No. It's puberty. <laughs> All over again at, at 40 what? <laughs> I, I touched it and oh my goodness. Eight fifty five four fifty free, And uh, I, you can give us a call. I don't even know what to do with that. Why would you want to after yeah. that? <laughs> LRN.FM is our Skype line. And uh, real quick, I want to tell you about the AMP program. The AMP program is... Well, if you like what we do here on Free Talk Live, you believe in the ideas of liberty, you want the ideas of liberty to be spread far and wide, you can help us because we use the money um, from the AMP program to only advertise, market, and promote Free Talk Live. It gets us on more radio stations, more downloads of the show. Specifically, what you're doing when you give money to the AMP program isn't giving money to Free Talk Live, it's giving money to spread the ideas of liberty. If you think we do a good job of it here on Free Talk Live, it, your money can go farther with us than it can with, really, frankly, any of those other liberty-oriented organizations because uh, you, you're not paying paychecks with the AMP program. Right. It's just getting the message spread farther and wider. So please... Join the AMP program. You get a few perks. We, uh, you know, we got an AMP only call in line, and although I love the uh, regular line better with the eight fifty five four fifty free number, uh, we've got an AMP forum on the Facebook page, and you can get a commercial free podcast and a few other things. Yeah. I mean, not to toot our own horn, but you you heard the phone we calls got a heck tonight. Of a horn though, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a big you horn. Touch it and <laughs> it toots. But, but I mean, you heard the calls. You know how refreshing it was to hear these kind of conversations on the radio. This is really how you can help keep those spreading and going robert in vermont robert you're on free talk live hey brian correct me if I, I may have heard you wrong but the last segment there you said that that people from other countries can't come over here work in the united states and go back home afterwards no um what i was saying was is that the the immigration laws that exist cannot are actually have no response to a lot of modern jobs like the tech industry there is you really can't come unless you lie and massage your way in via nafta you cannot come into this country and if you so have example, if you want to work a computer job yeah nafta was written before those jobs really existed right. so you have so to I, like change your job description and you have to kind of know how to navigate the system to like not every company knows how to do that, but some do, and they've got this process down, which isn't, it's kind of convoluted. It's just Yeah, hard. you have to cheat, which is the antithesis of, of legality. Robert? Okay, so then, so what you're talking, you're just saying computer jobs, right? Yeah, there's a few others, but computer jobs is the easy one for me to Let's remember. Let's just say it, it hasn't kept up with the time. Yeah. I, had a, I had a girlfriend who was uh, from uh, Canada, and she had a difficult time. So, like She had to prove for every nursing job that she took, she had to prove that an, somehow an American couldn't take that job. And that thought this was very confusing because how can you prove <laughs> that an American doesn't need a nursing job? Well, Mark, I, you have to go interview all 330 million Americans. There you go. Can you take this job? So, okay, next. <laughs> go on yeah. with your point, Robert. Maybe we're maybe we're missing the mark on this. Okay, well, uh, I know that over here in Vermont, and it has been for an awful, awful long time that, you know, the, the farmers that are over here, they'll go and they'll have the Jamaicans come over here. Right. And then they'll do all the, then they'll do all the farming, and then they have a house here, and they'll put them up in the house, and then at the end of the summer during the fall, they go back to Jamaica, and then you know during the, the spring they bring them back, and they've been doing it over here for thirty, forty years, probably. Yeah, you imagine trying to keep a Jamaican in uh, in Vermont in a uh, you know a cabin. Jamaican, I'm crazy. Yeah, in, <laughs> in February. <laughs> yeah, if the job you're going for fits within NAFTA, which I'm sure farming would, I, I, or maybe it doesn't, there's 63 jobs in that agreement in particular. Uh, of course, there's a lot of other laws out there and agreements out there. But um, it, yeah, then I, it's there is uh, a faster track. I won't say it's a fast track, but there is a faster track to, to getting in. And I imagine that would fall under what you're talking about, Robert. It's a good point. 
Yeah, I, well, I mean, it's 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 excellent because uh, you know we can learn a lot from you know people from Jamaica and other countries and learn a lot about their culture and stuff. I think we, I mean they could teach us a whole bunch of stuff, and then we can also you know teach them the, you know what we've learned over here. Yeah. I don't think we need to have any border at all. Yeah, it's so funny because so many people, and you're taught this in school as an you know an American child in public school, you're taught how great it is that America is this multicultural melting pot. And yet, mm-hmm. at the same time, there's so many people that seems no, I don't want their culture here. And so, <laughs> well, why not? This is I thought this was the great thing, and I agree. You know, infinite diversity and infinite combinations. You know, there's strength in diversity. Thanks for uh, the call, Robert. Could you imagine if you weren't allowed to visit websites that were not made by people in the U.S.? I mean, it's just ridiculous to think of the Internet having borders like that. Yeah, that is. Uh, well, it, it's kind of true. I mean, there's gambling sites you can't go to from this country. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, but, like, could you imagine if someone's blog from wherever you couldn't go to visit it? I mean, that would just be nuts. Sure, is the idea of Jamaicans coming up to Vermont to teach them about pot and the Vermonters teaching them about cheese and stuff? <laughs> I think there are probably some Which Vermonters who want to learn about pot. <laughs> it's like, don't worry, we know how to grow. No, anyway. <laughs> 855 450 free. I, I do think that we would. Okay, so the, what is it? Openborders.org has estimated that you would see a doubling. And that is an incredible statement, a doubling of the world GDP if you opened borders and allowed people to cross borders of all countries freely. Now, obviously, this isn't something that's going to happen anytime soon. You know, countries aren't going to open their borders. But if a large nation was to, uh, you know, be much more liberal in its, uh, um, you know, immigration policy, what that nation would achieve is, is it would get the productivity of the most productive um, people. That would come here. Now, I, I don't say you give away anything for, for free at all. Um, you, you know, this is just for people who want to work. <laughs> um, but that nation would get the productivity of those uh, those people. It would also apply pressure to nations around the world to have a freer, more uh, customer oriented government because they could lose their, um, you know, their people any time. Uh, if if I mean, imagine if everybody. I even Mex- think it, we've been talking about ISIS tonight. Like I even think this is the solution to. Um, totalitarian regimes and um, people being mistreated by their governments just instead of bombing these places and saying oh no no you can't come here but we're going to go to you and try to fix this mess that's been created by bombing by bombing you (laughs) why not just say okay well we'll open the borders and if you feel oppressed by wearing a burqa or whatever if you've had acid thrown in your face come live here we'll take care of you not well, not necessarily we'll take care of you, but we'll at least let you come be here better. and make a better we'll life for yourself. We'll give you an opportunity. Yeah. And think about this for a second. I mean, if you've seen the the maps of how much land the government owns in places like Nevada and uh, out west, sure, it's incredible. You're telling me that if you just sectioned off an area and said, you know, this is the Syrian... Uh, concentration camp or whatever, and uh, I'm not trying. I'm <laughs> just trying to be good, as <laughs> realistic as you can. What you, uh, refugee camp is what I meant to say. Refugees, um, you know, and inside that area, you you know, they can figure out who owns what land or whatever it is, and they can build whatever they want. They can bring people in, but they just they have to. That's their spot. This little Syria. I'll bet you we'd have inside of a couple, you know, a a decade or two, you'd have a thriving city that would be really awesome and we'd all benefit. Think for a second right now, if all the hardworking folks in Mexico that want to come here could move to Detroit. It would be so much better for that place. Mm -hmm. Um, The productivity that those people would bring, well, they would revitalize that city. Well, I'll I'll say, too, I mean, speaking of kind of refugees, um, in the 90s, I was working at a Wendy's. I was actually a manager. And in Utica, New York, they brought in a lot of Bosnians. Now, before somebody says, well, they're white, you know, or they're cultured or something, they're, they're Muslims. All right. They were all Muslims. All right. All right. And they, first off, they worked their butt off. Good. Okay. Now, I'll readily admit that the the company that or the franchisee that we were a part of uh, got like a thousand dollars, pretty much for everybody they hired out of that. So there was certainly incentive from the to government? bring from the government. Huh. Okay. Now there was certainly an incentive to bring them in. Okay. Full disclosure. But let me just say this about because if this whole immigration thing is, what if Muslims get in here? What if terrorists get in here? Oh, please. 
please let those Muslims in because those girls were so beautiful. And I had times you would not believe. Okay, I mean, you can't imagine. As soon as the, when the lights went out, oh, God, this was great. Bring on those Muslims. And you're Jewish. They're, they're messing with you and they're Jewish. And I, yeah, and they knew I was Jewish. I mean, at that time, especially, I was really, you know, kind of raising the flag about that. And, oh, God, they had no problem with my Judaism, let me tell you. <laughs> the, the, I, I do think They knew that, I was cut. Now, at $1,000, that's really nothing uh, when you compare, uh, you know, to a 1000 bucks is, is nothing to hire sure. an employee. So, I mean. But you're I getting could, a good employee with that. I can just imagine churches. The Lutherans really love immigration, by the way. I can just imagine the Lutherans cutting a check to businesses. Hey, here's $1,000 to take this employee and try them out and see what you think. And I bet you, I bet people would do it. 855. Well, I'm giving the number. We're check done. us out in the meantime at freetalklive.com. It's been Mark with you. And Brian. And Stephanie. Freetalklive.com. Is go- A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office